everyone and welcome to another episode of Better Life Project TV, the place to be to make your awesome business and life happen. Today I am so excited to welcome a very, very special and very unique woman to the show. My guest, Melissa Curry, launched her first jewellery design brand in Paris Fashion Week in 1999 and since then has had some highs and some lows which inspired her to create a very, very incredible and beautiful brand today, Be Your Own Success. Her success bar has taken the world by storm and has seen collaborations with Richard Branson and Virgin Atlantic and has gifted these incredible success bars to the likes of Michelle Obama and her children. I am so incredibly excited to hear from Melissa about her journey as a jewellery designer, about her highs and her lows and how she has rediscovered her success, her beauty, her self-belief and her confidence. Let's give a massive virtual round of applause to my wonderful guest, Melissa Curry. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. It is an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. Well, it's my pleasure, my absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I have been wearing your bracelet that my friends gifted me for my 30th birthday. Um, and it's the small pendant that says success on it. And every time I wear that, I am reminded that I define the sort of uh, success that I aspire to and that I need to work for it every day. And for me, it's so powerful looking down at my hand every day and being reminded of that. So as the creator behind that, thank you very, very much. Wow, it's, it's wonderful to hear that, um, that, uh, yeah, that you've connected with the, the, the idea and yeah. um, the message. And uh, it's my, it's, yeah, it's always a pleasure to, to see it and to feel it. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you've done, what the business is? Well, um, I, I suppose first and foremost, I design. So uh, that and being a mother, of course. So I'm, I'm between the two all the two time. Two big jobs. <laughs> two very big jobs. Um, and um, I started out as a designer. Mm -hmm. um, I started out when I was about 19, 20. I went to college in Paris and I studied visual communication. And I really, uh, I, I was still agitated. I still didn't know where it was going to all fit. Mm -hmm. But I worked during my time in Paris mm -hmm. and during my studies at a jewellery store, but a very beautiful, very bespoke place. And little did I know that was going to connect me to my dream. And that would be what I would develop in my life. Um, I always dreamed of doing something um, that was creative. And I always wanted to communicate through that. So little by little, uh, my life unfolded. And uh, in college, there was lots of different opportunities that came my way. And uh, one door after the next, after the next, just opened up this other world, which became my world. So from the age of 26, after lots of traveling and lots of experimenting, I uh, settled down and I built my own first brand okay. called Melissa C. And I was incredibly naive to think, here was I, I was going to make it and, um, and go out with a bit, with, with, uh, and, and be successful very quickly. Um, but, um, and I had no idea how, how, how terribly tough the industry would be. Mm. But I pursued and I launched uh, my first brand in Paris, at Paris Fashion Week in 2000, no, one, in 19, uh, 1998. Oh my goodness, the fact that you just said, I launched my first brand at Paris Fashion Week. <laughs> That's that sounds incredible. Was. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it all seems incredible, but it was, yeah. it, was it, it, just, it just happened. I was yeah. there, I had to make a move. Um, everybody was looking at me going, is Melissa going to do, is she going to do something okay. with her creativity? I had done. A, I had spent a lot of time traveling, so I had gathered a lot of information, and um, I was very inspired at the time. Mm. So just one thing led to the next, and the people who I had uh, become friendly with, they gave me the opportunity, and they opened the door, mm. um, and there I was in the middle of Paris Fashion Week, um, and it really only it started from there. I was incredibly naive. Okay. My, I certainly hadn't got the business structure that is, is needed. I had, mm. I had very little backing. I had the belief of a lot of people mm. and I had the support. But I had no idea how you build 
um, you know, a, a global brand. But that's what I wanted. Mm. I went after it. Um, and I was taken on very quickly by the Li Liberty of London. They picked me up. Okay. And, uh, and within a couple of weeks, I was in their office in London. I thought this was just a natural, pr it was mm. progressive. I thought it yeah. was what everybody got to do. Um, and they were, they were developing their uh, Millennium campaign, which was this global um, advertising campaign for themselves. And they asked me, would I be their jewellery designer? So it really started from there. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what that meant. I was mm -hmm. incredibly privileged and very honoured, but I had no idea what that would do to my career. And mm -hmm. effectively, it had a huge impact. Wow. Has it always been jewellery that was your tool or your platform to express that creativity? Or was there always little bits and pieces? Always oh, little bits bits and pieces. Okay. It, keep, it keeps me busy. It yeah. keeps me informed. It keeps me, it keeps my mind going. Mm. Um, and it keeps me connected to people. Yeah. So I would work with film. I would work with, um, I, I, did, I did a lot of styling at the time. Mm. Um, I, I was always interested in people and mm -hmm. I have a huge humanitarian side to me, mm -hmm. um, which was something that I grew up with and my father very much informed that part of me. Mm. Um, so you do a lot of work with the uh, Kingsley? Kasani. Kasani yeah. Institute, which works with young girls in Africa, isn't That's it? That's right. Women, yeah, yeah women mm. are ma amazing people mm. and are oh, so inspirational. Mm. Um, so I suppose due to me, due to the fact that I travelled a lot um, mm. in Africa and Asia uh, back in the 90s, the early 90s, um, and this is before even China really opened up, mm -hmm. you know, you see th there was just a very different world then. So I was very much informed by tribal mm -hmm. and the accessories and how, mm. you know, how strong and how yeah. meaningful they are in mm. everyday life. So it really kind of, it was a great language. Mm -hmm. um, so little by little, and it was through colleagues in school, they were like, Melissa, you're all so into detail. Mm. Really think about yeah. going into jewellery. Think okay. about it because it, we, they really thought that that was where I was going to be most mm. successful. And okay. effectively, that's what I suppose the main part of my work mm. is uh, building um, and informing pieces of jewellery, which can be personal, yeah. uh, very, very personal, or they can be a wow, or they can be, mm. you know, they, they, I can work with any size or any, any story. So when you were living in London, where did your life take you then? You were designing jewellery for a, a very big brand or a very big project. Where did your life take you then? What happened next? It catapulted. Um, it catapulted us all over the world very quickly. Mm. I had no idea that that it would do that. And even though you know I was very active, mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, you, you sleep very little because mm. you're young, um, you're you're in the limelight, and you're working with a lot of creatives. Uh, press starts coming. Mm -hmm. You know, you start. You have to start negotiating all these different areas of your work. That you really didn't think it through. Mm. Um, big stores mm. uh, were the next stop. Um, so very soon after Liberty, it became Le Bon Marché. It became mm. um, it became all of the a lot of the big stores in the, in the in the US, mm. Japan. Um, it was just it was a very interesting, very very exciting time. Mm. It all went. It was all. It was very. It was very fast. Mm. Very exciting. And at what stage uh, in that journey did you then become a mum? When did that new job or that new role come into play? Right, well that was, that was again, um, I don't think that was planned either. Okay. It was not something that I really, I adore children, and, mm -hmm. um, but I was really at the height of my career. Mm -hmm. And I was doing, I had to travel a lot at the time. Um, but in 2002, a little boy joined my world mm -hmm. and it was a very joyful time. Um, but a very different role, and mm. I suppose at that time, I was, I thought I could do it all. Mm -hmm. I thought I could work um, and continue on as I had done and mm -hmm. build, and this little boy and this little person would be a part of that, mm. but in fact he, he became incredibly ill. Mm -hmm. So um, life started to change, and I the life that I knew and the life that I really had a dialogue with very much shifted okay. and my concentration, my, um, yeah, I think that he, he needed me and okay. he brought me on a completely different journey. Mm -hmm. So that journey 
has, um, I suppose, very much inspired my new collection. Yes. Yeah. Tell, tell me about the new collection. Well, it's been a journey and it's yeah. been a process. Um, it, going back to that time, I think I had to take that decision. Mm -hmm. I had to make a decision um, that being, I was a single mom and uh, life had really, really changed. And due to his, his illness, I had to make a decision mm -hmm. that my career had to go on hold. Mm -hmm. So all my energies and my focus shifted mm -hmm. and it was very much about him. So little by little, everything that you know, it, it, it disappears. And once you make that decision, it's a very healthy decision because you know you can't possibly do the two, especially mm -hmm. being one person. Uh, economically, it became very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and life as I knew it in Paris, just it was, it was over. Mm -hmm. um, we tried a number of different places. I, I went to South Africa, I went mm -hmm. everywhere. I just, I wanted to surround myself with creatives and industry mm -hmm. because that for me was very, very important. Mm -hmm. Ireland didn't have an industry. Okay. However, um, in 2004, um, Keto's health really disintegrated and I came home. Okay. Um, and it was, it was at that time I knew that really Melissa's scene was over and mm -hmm. this little boy needed my full attention. So um, I, we went on that journey and mm -hmm. it was a very tough journey. It was a, I learned so much, which I'm very grateful for. Mm -hmm. um, I observed life from a very different place mm -hmm. um, and I met very different people. Um, and it was a time where my own confidence and my own conflict was very much in play. I had my dreams, I had my goals, I had my visual visions, mm -hmm. but I, they were untainable at the time because the demands and the needs of, of my son were just so, they were, they were just, you know, they were very much more at the fore. Mm -hmm. um, and I was surrounded by so many women similar to me. Mm -hmm. um, we struggled with our confidence, we struggled with our self-belief. Um, it, was, it was, we were in a different dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, life was so different. I, had, I was certainly, I was so far from the limelight, I was so far from everything that was true to me. Mm -hmm. I had a very different role and I had to learn to be that carer. I had to learn to be the mom, the friend, the, the nearly the, the, the man. I had to learn to do all these different things mm -hmm. and, uh, and get him well. That was mm -hmm. really my, the, the goal. Um, mm -hmm. So through this, through this time, I, I really, I suppose, I was really inspired by the, the, the women around me, um, their need of confidence, their need of self-belief, my own need of self-belief, and, um, and something that really struck me at the time was that our, our, our strength, it's our inner strength that really connects us all. And it's with that inner strength you can take that step mm -hmm. to imagining what you want and believing and achieving and getting to where you need to go in you. Mm -hmm. And it's really embracing that inner power and the, the inner you. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the, my bar, which has become success, um, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're here. We're both, we're, we? Yes, I have yeah. a little, yeah. I wear my little bar. Yeah. That's where the, it, it was very much formed from that time. Mm. Um, there's lots of layers and there's lots of different um, mm -hmm. meanings behind it, but ultimately it's about embracing your spirit, embracing your self-belief as a person mm -hmm. and, um, and bringing that forth and mm. imagining mm. your dream. And yes. it's so important to believe in your dream. It's our tool. The, the greatest tool we have as people is to imagine and using our imagination. Mm -hmm. And with the power of your imagination, and if you believe, um, believe in you and you believe mm -hmm. in what you what you want, you will achieve it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a it's just really about believing in it and holding on to that dream. Mm -hmm. um, for 14 years, I couldn't do it. I couldn't. I every time I made a step, I had to step two, two steps back, if mm -hmm. not more. It was. It was a very, very challenging time. I had a lot of self-doubt. I was, mm -hmm. I was, my, my world was so far away. Um, I lost myself, mm -hmm. um, and I had, I, I just kept on imagining, no, I'm going to get back there. But it, I was going to go back in a very different way, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, 
so the first part for me was to I continued Melissa Curry, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the more flamboyant side of me, mm -hmm. um, very gently and I, you know, I worked in a very slow way mm -hmm. and I started to imagine a different world. I started to imagine um, something that could encourage us and with the gift of encouragement and with the gift of um, support, um, I felt that we could really, really help each other out mm -hmm. and really define a different world mm -hmm. um, as girls, as women, as people. Mm -hmm. So I built the bar, um, yes, for women and girls, but really for people. And Be Your Own Success was informed by that process and it was built for people. And it was mm -hmm. to remind them that everything is possible mm -hmm. and that your own power, your own strength and your own connection and your imagination and your belief achieve everything you need to achieve and everything you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. So that's really the formation and the little bar yeah. is the spearhead to be your own success. Yeah. You've given me goosebumps everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> whenever I work with um, whenever I work with my clients, particularly women, I always encourage them to examine their belief system mm -hmm. and what they believe to be true about the world that they live in. And once they have an understanding of that, how can they recreate or rebuild that world to inspire them to be successful, to inspire them to love themselves, take care of themselves, and to treat themselves with love and kindness. And one of the very practical roads that I take with these women is to surround themselves with affirmations and reminders mm -hmm. of their worth, of their value, and of what they can do. And I think as women, and um, we are very blessed to have brilliant designers like you who can create those reminders, I call them triggers, to help us to think about our world a little bit differently. I believe we all have this mean girl voice in our head that can sometimes get very, very loud. And unless we have something in the world to say, hang on a second, love, there's a different way for you to do things. Mm -hmm. There's a different way to think about things and there's a different way to be. And when you can carry that reminder around with you, I really believe that we can be unstoppable um, and it is so inspiring that you used your own journey to create something that's helping hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, so many women and men. I think it's incredible. Well, you're being really generous. Thank you very much. And I think it can only come from, if something has come from inside, you have to share it mm. um, and you can help and you can support and you can encourage with mm -hmm. it. There's a big part of me that, uh, through my own journey, has influenced my authenticity. Mm -hmm. And the authentic part of self is just so important. Mm -hmm. um, it helps everything mm -hmm. along the way. Um, we're constantly bombarded with, with words. Yes, that mean voice, of course, I live mm -hmm. with it myself. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's always there tapping yeah. you. Um, I think Dove, I think they had an amazing campaign. Do you remember Dove's campaign? D Dove has actually inspired a lot of work I do with young girls around body confidence. So wow, their, their work is incredible. It is, yeah. it really is. You yeah. They did a great, they had a great campaign built mm -hmm. in France, in Paris, and they okay. had dialogues. It was very interesting. Um, but yes, we do have that mm -hmm. mean in our voice. Mm -hmm. And and also, we, we tend to share it mm -hmm. more than we think we do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think being a girl... Uh, we've gone through lots of lots of different parts in our in our history and our mm -hmm. evolution, which is extraordinary. But most importantly, now is about being us mm -hmm. and embracing it and embracing our vulnerable mm -hmm. areas, embracing our strengths, our beauty mm -hmm. from the inside out. Mm -hmm. um, and the inside, the inside is just as important as the outside. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess that's what I like you, mm -hmm. and that's what I was so inspired to do. Um, and, and build those reminders and make sure that girls and, and men of course but girls in particular that they must be kind they must be generous and they must care for themselves and others around them and with that I know it sounds really simple but it's true it makes such a difference it does to people's lives yeah. it really does and it's those simple messages that are the most beautiful, that are the most impactful, because they're easy to digest and they're easy to make happen and to, they are. to turn into to turn into action. Absolutely, um, it it really is. I was at a parent teacher meeting recently for my son, mm -hmm. and his teacher 
um, was amazed at the progress my son had made over the, 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 the seven or eight months they were in school. And he said it was the small things that made a difference in his life. And it was fascinating to see those little tiny shifts that made those big shifts happen. And it brought me back to the simplicity Mm -hmm. and those tiny little shifts that we must make in ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it brought me back also to the steps and the routing system that I've developed within the jewellery, within Be Your Own Success, because, yes, I had imagined a different world. I had imagined a much greater world with, with um, I suppose, more compassion and mm -hmm. uh, a lot more... Um, yeah, just a better place, really. Mm -hmm. And for, for, for girls in particular, mm -hmm. because we give ourselves so much, so much I suppose, such a hard time, yeah. um, and we're just influenced by media mm -hmm. at, such an, at such a pace. So mm -hmm. it's the young girls, it's also my age group, it's all of us. We, have, mm -hmm. we all carry self-doubt somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I guess the little bar is also about that, and mm -hmm. when we gift it, mm -hmm. was it's to remind that, that I'm rooting for you, yeah. and it's to pay it forward. Yeah. Um, and I think that's just if and if we can do that more often, I think we have an amazing way, or certainly amazing starting point of, of making things happen for us. Yeah. What advice would you give to a woman on a similar journey to you, or embarking on a similar path? Well, I think we all have journeys. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, as a woman, uh, as a young girl starting out in. in life as as a woman going back to work like me as uh, as a young person making a change in their career um, I think your number one your imagination is your greatest tool um, and believing and, and being con, you know believing in what you really want is absolutely fundamental and once you make that choice it's working on it every single day Day. we know we know all this yeah. um, but it's also in very important to know that there's a community out there that are going to support you because making that first step is terrifying I was terrified I didn't even own the bar when I brought it out first okay. I couldn't I had no confidence yeah. I had built it for everybody except me okay. and it was really interesting it had to it took me a while to to to, to take it to, to take it forward and to understand that it actually was a part of me. Mm -hmm. I had built it, I had built it for others, but I, it came from me and my own lack of confidence, my own lack of self-belief. Um, and I think when I did that, I could share it and I could explain it. Mm -hmm. And now I am, so thanks for, it. you know, it's, it's wonderful being here because I can, I'm, I'm much more at ease with it. Um, and and now I can I can bring it and share it into mm. the bigger world, mm. um, but it fundamentally is, is is connecting with the vision of what is going to make you happy mm. at the end of the day, mm. and and to define it, mm. and stepping out into the world and making that first step, and and taking and knowing that you have the strength to do it, knowing that you you will do it, and with that self belief you 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 can get there. Tell me about how you became one with what you were doing and how you were able to connect with it at a personal level that empowered you to share it with the world more openly, maybe. Sure. Um, it has been a process. Believe me, it has been a long process. I've, I, my, my, my journey really changed about 14 years ago, mm. so getting my son well was, was the first, mm -hmm. um, and, and embarking um, on the new me is, has been a process. Mm -hmm. um, and bringing, I did build a bar for other women like me, um, and the word success came after. Um, yeah. But the bar was, was in me, and it was a vision that I had for a very long time, so it was a, it was a part of my imagination. And it took a whole 18 months to make, to even just get it physically right, because it had to be engineered. Yeah. Um, so the, pro, the, the actual piece nearly had its own journey, mm -hmm. as, as I did. Mm -hmm. And once I started to understand that people actually enjoyed it mm. once they understand that it was personal to them it was emotional it mm. connected them and it made them feel 
better. Mm. And they they really resonated with the story and they resonated mm -hmm. with what it meant. I think little by little, it start the penny starts to drop that mm. you've made something with purpose mm -hmm. and you've made something that is different, mm -hmm. but you've made something that is authentic. Mm -hmm. And it is your place to mm -hmm. to share it and bring it further. Um, I guess also I did a I was a part of a a, a wonderful pop up store in London with my other range about two two or three years ago two years ago, and I met the this very beautiful woman who had another stand with these exquisite linen accessories and it was just it was. Mm -hmm very beautiful and I I ventured over and I saw they had this table book very another exquisite piece of work and I opened it up and it was the Kasani Living Linens it was a project in mm -hmm. East Africa and it was a project that helped and inspired women to reach economic independence mm -hmm. and I was in, I was amused and I was nearly surprised that actually I had met something so familiar Mm -hmm. and something so similar mm -hmm. and um, and the dialogue just fitted everything fitted with me but mm -hmm. I couldn't say that um, because I certainly didn't seem to somebody on the outside that I was actually torn inside I mm -hmm. had as much doubt in myself as as uh, you know as, as yeah I, 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 I suppose I had huge self-doubt mm -hmm. yes yeah, huge and um but I was scaring my little bar and I was sharing my little bar and I was, you know, I was with, it. We, we were, we were discussing it and, and when I saw these women, I said, I've got to work with you. I've mm -hmm. got to, I really want to work with you. Um, your story and my story are so similar. Mm -hmm. And when I opened the first page of that book and their eyes were full of, they were nearly empty mm -hmm. and they had been I mean, goodness knows what has happened to these women. It was just, it was scary at the thought, at the very thought. But by the end of the book, you had women who had dignity. You mm -hmm. had women who were settled. Mm -hmm. You were women who could actually smile and laugh. And, and in the physical world, you had women who would actually shelter. Mm -hmm. And they had their own homes. Mm -hmm. They had a job to go to every day. And they gave us, they gave, um, uh, support and um, education to their, their children. And this was Kasani. And I, I just, I looked at this woman and I said, you've got to put me in touch with the head of Kasani. Of course, I was nothing. Mm -hmm. And these guys work with big organizations. But because of my own personal story and uh, the familiarity of it to them, um, the CEO or the, the, head, um, the head of it, uh, a wonderful woman called Nicole uh, Elson, um, she immediately um, connected with my mm. story and said, "Absolutely, we'll 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 do something together." And we started to build something around the the bar. Mm -hmm. And I I I think I gently unfolded it in Dublin, but um, with uh, with the kindness of another woman in my in my business arena, she said, "You've got to you've got to speak to Virgin. Okay. I adore." what you're doing, I'm wearing it, it's magnificent, please speak to Virgin, they're going to love you. So I picked up the phone and I connected with the head of innovation mm -hmm. and I told her about the story and I showed her what we were doing with Kisani mm -hmm. um, because they have ethics and they have uh, a very, they like, um, they like projects and uh, see CSR, you know, mm -hmm. they have their own take on CSR. Um, and it's very important to their brand also. So when I showed them what I was doing, they said, we want that on board. Got to get that on board. Okay. And I suppose, again, going back to your question, it's all these little milestones, yeah. all these little opportunities mm -hmm. that, um, that really resonate with you mm -hmm. and they bring home that your idea mm -hmm. or your, you know, your goal mm -hmm. is actually feasible yeah. and it means something. Um, so then I went on to creating the little O, which is about yeah. embracing opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Which is going to be next on my shopping list. <laughs> <laughs> the little O. Yeah. yeah, the little O. And it's got yeah. a tiny little diamond, yeah. which is about your inner sparkle. Oh. Yeah. Sparkle is one of my favourite words. Really? Yeah. 
I think there's a really valuable lesson in your journey as well about patience and perseverance. Mm -hmm. And I think we live in a world um, where a lot of people obsess over short term. Um, everyone wants something now. Yeah. Instant gratification mm -hmm. results now. And I think when it comes to creating greatness, not enough people teach us about the value of patience mm -hmm. and perseverance mm -hmm. and sometimes our priorities in life are 100% going to shift and change but that doesn't mean that we need to let go and I, I don't think that you let go you can't no I no you can't can. you can't but we can't yeah um it's very sad when I see women um for all sorts of reasons lose themselves um but I understand that I have done also and I, I try and remind them that it's not lost at all, mm -hmm. that their inner sparkle is there and they have that strength and if they just, just, in, just to take some time out for themselves, that that, you know, take that space and take that, that, that moment and, mm -hmm. and just to connect with themselves and to believe that they can do it. Of course they can. If I've done it, anybody can do it. If the women, when I look at the women in Kasani, with the support they have gathered, and um, because they believed that they could overcome all their hurdles, which, I mean, were much more immense than mine, mm. or or people who, people I know, mm. but they did it, and mm. then the, they attracted all this support from the outside world. And who would have thought these eight Congolese women mm. um, would, could have attracted mm. the support? And that's what I'm saying. When you step into your idea, or when you step into your um, to you and what you want to do, a whole different community opens up to support you. Yeah. And then you're encouraged on, mm -hmm. and they might not be the same people that you thought would. They mm -hmm. might, and that's one big lesson I have learned. I mm. think they're not necessarily your family. They're not necessarily your best friends. They, you have to step away mm. and and just embrace the opportunities that come because they, you will attract support. You will attract. Um, a community that will, will help you forward and propel yeah. forward yeah. and to be very open and, and open-minded by mm -hmm. that and I think that's where my little O came from yeah. and it's about that reminder mm -hmm. that life is full of possibilities yeah. and you've got to embrace them yeah. and know that they are going to bring you to the next stage. Yes. 100%. Aren't they? Yeah. yeah. When you spoke about imagination there, I have worked with some women and men who don't know how they can tap into the imagination or into their creativity. They really struggle with that. Mm -hmm. I believe that our authenticity can be found in our creativity because I believe it's such a unique expression. Um, it takes on such a un unique form. And as such a creative yourself, what advice would you give to someone who's struggling trying to find out what that is? How can they tap into their imagination more? I think it's about freeing your mind. With, with the busy schedule I have, I don't necessarily live in my imagination. Okay. I have to nourish it. Okay. And what, you, what that means is that you actually have to step out mm -hmm. of noise. Mm. And that means living and being in that moment mm. and letting your mind wander. Now, mm. that, is, that, that takes a little bit of doing. Mm -hmm. I was trying to work with mindfulness and, and all the people say, it's, you know, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. I find it extraordinarily difficult, mm -hmm. but I am trying to practice it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, yes, I am a creative and that's my world, but I also have to nourish it mm -hmm. because it doesn't come easily because I'm distracted all the time. Mm -hmm. I have so many other chores and errands to do. Mm -hmm. I have to manage. I've, I'm a mom. I have to do everything like everybody else. Mm -hmm. So imagining is really all it is is stepping out of the noise and just imagining, letting your mind go. Mm -hmm. As as simple as that. And you can, on a on a Sunday, I think it's a lovely thing to do is just sit somewhere that's peaceful for you mm -hmm. and imagine even what you want to be. Yeah. Whether that is being a better you. Whether that's like, well, how can I, you know, how can I be happier in me. Mm. That's imagining. Yeah. It's not about imagining a picture or imagining a piece of design work. It's about imagining you happy. Yeah. I think that's the way I would yeah. see it. Yeah. Mm. I think that's brilliant. Nourishing your imagination, but at the same time also understanding that we don't always have to be in it. No. Um, and that, it, that it is something that we need to practice. Yeah, we do work on it. Very much so. And it, it was a, 
a, a wonderful man who I met at his train station. He's the father of a, a young boy mm -hmm. who's in my son's class. He he arrived like a tornado mm -hmm. uh, and an incredibly grounded man and has done so many things. Uh, he's, he was a doctor. He's I mean he studied, uh, you know, endless amounts of years in in all sorts of disciplines. And his first question to me, he said. What has escalated in the ninth, in in the last fifteen years? And I looked at him and I said, "Goodness." Um, and he goes, "Media." And I said, "Of course, media." Mm -hmm. And he okay. said, "That is noise, and it has taken over all of our lives." So we're talking about phones, we're talking about TV, we're talking about radio, mm -hmm. and he said, "It is the biggest addiction." we have and we're mm -hmm. facing yeah. and he said that is what the poison is mm -hmm. and we must learn to step out of it yeah. because it is an amazing tool and we can use it to our advantage and it informs us mm -hmm. but we must learn to turn it off and I am like everybody else I've got the phone I've got the Instagram mm -hmm. I've got you know all the tools that are demanded of you mm -hmm. and especially as a creative um, but um, he, he reminded me there and then that's the noise. Mm -hmm. And if you live in the noise, how are you supposed to be you? Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. It is such a distraction and it does, it, it takes us away from, it does, it takes us away from our authenticity because we're, we become confused by everyone else's standards and expectations, dreams and goals. And we sometimes think that we need to be their version of success. Absolutely. We sometimes feel like we need to aspire to someone else's. And, and we become completely disconnected from what it is that we want. Completely, yeah. completely. And I think that's the real issue mm. now, that yeah. the young girls are, I mean, it's its wonderful if they're picking it up in, in, a, mm. in, a, in, a, in a positive context, but certainly um, if the way social media um, and, and, and media is, uh, is impacting our lives, it's incredibly dangerous yeah. for young girls. 100%. Yeah. yeah, so I think that's where... Um, you know, this is where I think BYOS comes in also, mm -hmm. um, because it is about asking you to be you. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, interesting enough, the millennials who are a big part of our world, um, they want care. Mm -hmm. They like to think that they, you know, they're connected to care. Um, so it's very interesting. They've got this, you know, this mad, um, impactful um, world. Um, filling them with all sorts of nonsense in the mm -hmm. social media and mm -hmm. and uh, and all those um, different um, uh, av avenues, mm -hmm. um, and then you've got this other part of them that want authenticity. So it's it's you know it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. It's it is a tense conflict. It is a tense um, conflict, and I think especially for young girls growing up who who crave authenticity, but also just want to feel like they belong as well. It can be quite it's a quite difficult. It's a difficult path to navigate, it but really it is, can yeah. be done. Of course, it can. Yeah. And it's about just knowing that that's a tool, and they've yeah. got to use it in a correct way. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a, it's very very important that they understand who they are more yeah. than more so than ever. I think. Oh, yeah. I think, and I don't mean to be the older girl, you know. No, I, I don't mean that at all. I I've got to talk. I'm talking to myself yeah. too. No, and when I say it, I talk to myself as well. I think mm -hmm. it's incredibly important to be able to step away from that noise and to understand, well, who am I at the end of the day, and what do I want? What are my own needs and desires, and how can I honor that? And how yeah. can I be true to that? I, I was able to reflect on my journey and go, it all makes sense now. But unfortunately, when you're in it, sometimes it doesn't make sense. But you've got to say that as well. Yeah. It's yeah. like she doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Mm. Yeah. But we, we don't take, we don't have that language. You mm -hmm. see, we don't know it. Yeah. We're not taught that language. We're not taught anything to do with that language. So you're, you're left with these massive gaps in your head mm -hmm. um, and in you. And I think certainly nowadays, everything's in constant change. Mm -hmm. Everything's in constant flux. And you can be absolutely assured mm -hmm. that your life will always be mm -hmm. in constant change. So I think it's about learning that language, yeah. so that it isn't you're not going to be in that hard space all the time. You can talk, mm -hmm. you can share, you can self-talk, and just say, "Yeah, okay, I own it. I'm, I'm, I'm having a really difficult time here. I don't know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. I actually, I, I'm lost." Mm -hmm. And I think even owning that is fantastic. Yeah. I certainly didn't know how to do yeah. it. Um, when, when I knew, when I had to accept 
that I had made. Whether it was an error, whether it was a bad judgment, or whatever I had made, and it had brought and it had replicated now into my professional life, my economic life, mm. uh, my personal life, my everything. Mm. I was horrified at myself, mm -hmm. but I didn't have the language yeah. to cope with it. I didn't have the language to say, okay, this is what's happened to you. Mm. Um, I, I, I hid, I, I stayed, you know, I stayed in my shell. Um, I, I naturally enough, I, I, I sought help, I had to, I had to mm. seek help. Um, and I just needed people to actually give me that language because I certainly didn't know it. Yeah. I was coming from a fashion, I mean, there's nothing like, fashion is certainly not uh, deep and meaningful. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was really interesting learning all these tools as mm. I went through. Mm. Um, and of course, that's, you know, when you say, well, you're sharing it now, and I said, yeah, well, you have to share it mm. because there's such a gap. Mm. And if you can share it, I think you're going to help and you're going to support and it's going to help people on their journey. What's been one of the best things that's happened on your journey so far? One of the greatest accomplishments, one of the greatest successes? There's markers mm -hmm. uh, on your, on your, uh, in your business mm -hmm. side that, um, like when my first bar was gifted to Michelle Obama. Um, so going back to that, um, it was a time when I was incredibly low. So when I called the Taoiseach and told him that I had a very special gift for a woman who I absolutely thought so highly of mm -hmm. um, for her colour, for her belief system, for her strength, for for being a mom, for everything. I just mm -hmm. thought what they had done, mm -hmm. I'm, not a, I'm not a politician, mm -hmm. but I thought it was an extraordinary leap for the world. Mm -hmm. And I just said, would you think about giving this to her? Because mm -hmm. I think she is to be she's to be commended and she's to be celebrated mm -hmm. and they couldn't have thought of something more beautiful and they said absolutely yes mm -hmm. and we'll have to call protocol and they got all excited mm -hmm. and I, I couldn't say it to anybody mm -hmm. because I, I knew protocol is protocol okay. and so for me that was a milestone mm -hmm. and that for me was yes okay. it's understood yeah. Yeah. and from that moment I said wow I'm going to step out mm -hmm. of going to go on this journey I didn't know what that journey was mm. but I knew that this something was was inviting me to become something else mm -hmm. and um, and so those side of milestones those little opportunities really are my markers in, mm. in my business and the new in, in, in and what's informed BYOS mm. and then on the personal which is still playing catch-up and mm. um, I suppose it's taking that moment on a beach or on a room, or, mm. or, or walking with myself and going, you are becoming you. And that for me is the most powerful at the moment and I totally forget to do it. Okay. And I totally forget about me because I'm so busy being other people <laughs> mm. and trying to encourage my son and being a very, very busy mom of one. Um, as a single parent, mm. I totally forget about me and me yeah. all the time. Yeah. And I think oh, that's why I have to take that time out okay. and, and, and go into that space okay. and being honest. Okay. And it's so important. Mm. Um, and they're my reminders. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Melissa, thank you so much for sharing on this show. Uh, you have inspired a lot of people, me, to keep pursuing my dream. I work with a lot of women either in, in events or one-to-one -one, and quite often I will open it with, with saying don't ever tell me that dreams don't exist because you're standing in mine and um, you have reminded me to keep going and to keep pushing so thank you very much. Listen well done on what you are achieving mm. and what you're sharing with all of us. Mm. Um, it's so important for us to dream, yeah. it's so important for us to let go mm. um, and it's so important important to be in the pursuit of your own happiness and I think that's what the little the little the, the whole BYOS mm. philosophy mm -hmm. is about self-belief yeah. is about connecting with your strength which is the ultimate starting point and knowing that it's there embracing those opportunities and finding the balance mm. 
because that's also another big part of, um, of us is finding that balance and really sharing love and compassion and doing what you love. Um, and I think then all of this is in pursuit of happiness and, and happiness is the ultimate goal of being your own success. And it's the ultimate goal for so many people as well. It is the um, ultimate goal. It's, it's what we all want um, when, it's what we all want in life. Um, and it's very affirming to know that it is an inside job, as you refer to. It is something that comes from within. So it is. You work on from within. It's something that you can ultimately define for yourself. It is, and it's incredibly important. And um, us girls um, have it all. Um, but we do terrible. We do we do very much beat ourselves up, and our lack of confidence mm. is is quite extraordinary. I think. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying boys don't suffer from it. Mm. We're just very different, yeah. and we're vulnerable in that yeah. area. Yeah. Um, it's very personal, so we don't mm. necessarily talk about it. But I think confidence is absolutely our our issue. Yeah. And if we can support each other, mm -hmm. um, we can certainly redefine things mm. for ourselves and make it. So thank you. I've really enjoyed being here today. Thank you. If people would like to find out more information about you and be your own success, the best place is probably the website. Yeah, we've just launched the first part of our website. Okay. Um, so it's bios.melissacurry.com. Okay. And uh, they're welcome to share their story with us. Um, okay. That is part of the brand. It's uh, be your own success, but it is hashtag share your story. Okay. Um, so they can, uh, they can email us mm -hmm. and we have an active blog. Okay. And we've an active Instagram, and it is about sharing your story as as you know yourself. Okay. okay. For any of my clients watching this, get your story in there. Thank you so much. Sarah. You're on Instagram as well, aren't you? Yes. Okay. Yes. What was your? My Instagram handle is bios by Melissa Curry. Okay. And follow on Instagram as well. Thank you. Thank you so much.